uh, the recording started. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Ali Azzedine. I'm from Lebanon, based in Dubai. And uh, via Four Generation for Education, we've been doing our math day today. And, uh, and we have people today from the UAE, India, South Africa, Philippines, Lebanon, uh, Jordan, uh, where I want to take you also. I want to take you to Pakistan, um, uh, South Africa, uh, Denmark, uh, the cold Denmark and uh, Lisbon, Portugal, uh, Kuwait, and I have more and more country like Qatar, like Indonesia. I'm sure some people are watching us from the US this morning in the US, Istanbul and uh, Saudi Arabia. So and I'm so happy to finish the day with you. And let me tell you in our morning session, when Jennifer asked the participant, which one of those most challenging things in the math lessons you are facing, and most of our attendees answered creativity. And look how we are finishing our day. We are finishing our day with mass creativity and making sense with you. Uh, let us know more what did you prepare for us. I'm so excited for this session. And I'm sure, as usual, working with you will be very inspiring. Ali, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to saying good morning to everyone. For here, it's uh, 6 o'clock in the morning in California where I live at the moment. And um, so I'm going to start, I guess, yes, Ali? Yes, go ahead. Yes, okay. our participants are here. And uh, let me say hello to all the people on Facebook. I will be also keeping an eye on what's happening on Facebook so we can interact with our participants on Facebook as well. All right. That sounds perfect, Ali. So while, while, while Ali is, uh, getting onto Facebook and connecting there. I'm going to ask you just very quickly off the top of your head and in the chat box, please, to name the top three things that children love to do. So what are the top three things that children love to do? In the chat box, I'm going to share with Anne your thinking. And uh, we start with Pinar. Pinar, make sure you are putting all panelists and attendees. Uh, Pinar and Usama, they said playing art, uh, playing games, exploring, solving puzzle, having fun, talk, explore, build blocks, uh, art, uh, and uh, the chat is on fire. Uh, a lot of similar words. The, uh, I have the word eating. <laughs> uh, so uh, again, play, arts, and game are coming again and again. Yes, I'm not surprised. And then yes. I want you to think, and you don't have to write anything in the chat box unless you feel like it, but just think, how are these things honored in your classroom? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a moment of reflection directly from the first minute of this webinar. Exactly. And I think this is what we're going to bear in mind the whole time that we're together this morning. We're going to be thinking about how can I make opportunities to put some of these things that children love to do into my classroom. Because obviously, if they're doing something they want to be doing and something they love, they're going to be having fun and learning at the same time. As we know, especially with the younger children, play is their work. I don't think I'll be making any enemies saying that. Play is the work of childhood. So the more we can put into it, the better. So um, do we get any comments there, Ali, that you want to share? Rashida, she said, we do math drill. <laughs> <laughs> ay, 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 ay. <laughs> so hopefully this session, after this session, Rashida, you're going to change a little bit these practices in the classroom and uh, we will add more play as what Anne said now. Yes, I think there are some very, very easy ways to add play and creativity to your math sessions in whatever curriculum you're teaching, in whatever country you're teaching. Um, 
who am I? <laughs> Other than a friend of Ali's. Um, I met Ali in, I believe. Um, did, did you click the slide? So I'm not seeing the second slide. Thank you for the reminder. I'm very yes. bad at doing that. <laughs> You'll probably have to remind me 50 times there. Yes, okay. So this one we've talked about it. Yes. Yeah. Now uh, let's know a little bit about Anne. And then I have uh, a comment also I would like to share it. We don't play in secondary classes. So yeah. this, is, this would be a very nice discussion maybe towards the end, unless you want to comment on it now, Anne. Uh, I'll comment right away because I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I'm also glad to have you here because I think this applies equally to our secondary classrooms. And I have included a couple of puzzles and things like that, where you, you'll really see that um, this applies in the secondary school as well. So Rabia, yeah. wait for a few more minutes and I'm sure with Anne, you will have some new ideas to take to your secondary classes so you can play with your secondary students. Absolutely. And you can see who I am from the slide there. I don't need to tell you. Um, I have traveled all over, my, all over the world. Um, I've been in education for almost 55 years now. <laughs> it's right, it's quite scary. <laughs> I, I met Ali in, I believe it was Qatar at the time. I was working in Qatar. Um, I was a management advisor to the um, Ministry. Uh, Education Council. So that's who I am. Yes, you wanted to share something, Ali. Yeah. No, I was saying that you were working for the Ministry. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, yes. Yeah, did you want to share a comment too? No, we're okay. All right, all right. So I wonder how many of you have seen this two-year-old. I wanted to start because this child is doing something that's one of the easiest things to do in your classroom and that children love. Carpentry, woodwork, working with forestry products, anyone who's doing units on rebuilding, recycling, these familiar words there, will absolutely love this little two-year-old. His father's name is Adam Stiff. And the two-year-old, as you can see, has a real hammer, an adult hammer in their hand and a bunch of penny nails. And of course, some wood to practice on. And I would like to, um, to watch this young man briefly. So I think, Anne, you need to click play yes on the video. Yes, I'm not finding it. That's the uh, but if you if you just click on it, maybe it will it will move. No, that's what I'm really hoping. Okay, but it's not going to. Okay, we can do we can exit the full screen. Yes, and then click on play. Exit the full screen and click on play. That's yes, and we watch it in a small screen. Yes. For And today it's not going to play. Okay, it's not playing. So we're going to let the uh, uh, teachers watch it uh, on the internet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you type in two-year-old in the workshop or two-year-old hammering nails, it's yeah. very brief. I think it's one minute. So not, not hard to watch there. Okay. Um, going to, and, and it's, it's just fun. It's just uh, so unusual because people usually gasp when they see a two-year-old with a hammer and nails. But believe me, I've taught, I couldn't teach math without teaching carpentry at the same time. Ali knows that because that's how I met him. I came on the airplane and I was loaded, my suitcase was loaded with wood and nails. And you can imagine the joy of going through uh, customs there. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, going so to I, put, I'm going to put the link in the chat. So because some people are asking for it. So you can watch this video later on and then we can continue with Anne in the following slides. Yes, absolutely. 
Um, and if you don't, I, I would see it just for fun because it's um, a really excellent uh, uh, yeah, illustration of safe. the fact that it is completely safe to do carpentry. And yeah. we'll go into that later and you will see a lot of, um, a lot of ideas coming up that actually came from Dubai from the time that I met Ali and I did a class there for him. Uh, and some of the ideas I've included because they're wonderful photographs. So um, what about you? Uh, what, is, what is your primary complaint about math in the class? <laughs> so what is your primary complaint about math? Let's check what you are going to tell us in the chat on Zoom or on Facebook and hear from you and then make some transition to what Anne prepared for us uh, today. And uh, I got another link about the video uh, from another participant who shared it with us. Samah is saying uh, one of the complaints, math is hard. Math is hard. Oi, 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 oi. Another complaint, lack of foundational conceptual understanding. So maybe the students yes. are reaching uh, upper primary or middle school and they don't have really a deep understanding. Tracy is saying how we can make it playful. Um, Vivian is telling us how to make it interactive. We have limited manipulatives, uh, fear of numbers. Uh, how to initiate and promote inquiry in the classroom. And so these are some of the complaints uh, from our attendees today. And then uh, Priyanka is saying students doesn't feel engaged uh, with math. Well, you know what? I think with, with some little carpentry in there, a hammer and some nails, uh, not, not expensive, just a hammer and nails. I found lumber yards are very good because I'm teaching children. They're very good at letting me have things for free. So, <laughs> and Shakira, Shakira on Facebook, uh, she said the pressure of following a textbook, a worksheet and a workbook. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes, I think we have to move away from that kind of stuff. Uh, and possibly supplement it at the beginning, then they'll see what fun you're having with it and how the children are still, still learning. So this is what the theme of my presentation this morning is about, adding fun, play, and creativity to the math class. Um, I want you to do something now. It's time for an activity. Uh, in 10th grade, I came across a stumbling block. We had to learn poetry. We had to write poetry and we had to read a lot of poetry. I think Ali knows that poetry is now one of my loves. Yes. However, if you had told me that poetry is nothing but repeated patterns in math, I think I might have understood it more easily. And the simplest pattern to understand is the heartbeat. So we're actually going to try writing a poem together based on the beat of our heart. So I want you to do this with, with me as we go, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, hold a hand up, wave. There you go, I can't see you. I think Ali can though. We're going to make a heartbeat. So it goes one, two, one. Got it? Yes. Very easy. Let's do it together because we'll turn this into a poem as we, as we move through this slide. And in case you didn't realize this, we're learning iambic pentameter. There's a math word right there, pentameter. Five beats because that's what we're going to be using. So let's go together. You ready? Love dub, love dub, love dub, love dub, love dub. Yes, we're there. <laughs> we're okay. here, but I think they are doing it at home. I'm not able yes. to see them. Uh, I'm just seeing you, Anne, and then I'm oh. trying also to model it with you. We are in a webinar format, not a meeting format. I know that. I hope you're doing it. And yes. <laughs> Honestly, children need to move and the more they can feel it inside their body, 
the easier it is for them to understand. So I'm getting and plenty of yes telling us, yes, we're doing it, we're doing it. It's nice, we're with you. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to start to put words to it. Uh, but let's practice one more time so that okay. everyone has it and that everyone participates. So are you ready? Ready. And on dub, love dub, love dub, love dub, love dub. Keep going. Love dub, love dub, love dub, love dub, love dub. Let's see what happens. Here comes the poem. It's called In the Seasons, the Four Seasons. You're going to write it. And our I'm friends on Facebook are also it. doing it. <laughs> Good, excellent. I'm going to model the first couple of lines. These are lines that I just made up. So it's not very expert and we'll do it together. In spring, the snow drop pushes through the soil. The water in the creeks and streams flows deep. Over to you. In spring, the snowdrop pushes throughout the soil. The water in the creeks and streams flows deep. Very good, Ali. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm good with that. I'm very bad in math and in music. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good, you did a great job. It's not hard if you put movement to it. Yes, yes. And of course, all sorts of rhythms that you can clap. Mm -hmm. and the children must move. <laughs> we all know they need to move. So let's see what lines you came up with. Add your own line. All you have to do is one line. So Kirsty, she added, I listen, I hear, I see, I feel water. Oh, lovely, Kirsten. <laughs> and Heba, she's sharing, in summer, the sun shines through our homes. Very nice, well done. <laughs> uh, I think you have poets here in this uh, in this webinar, Anne. <laughs> poets. <laughs> Any other lines? Yes, I have? have one from Facebook. This is wonderful for our upcoming inquiry and skills. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with a poem challenge at the end also. Because one of, one of the workshop leaders I work with uh, has written an absolutely marvelous book. And it's only just come out. And it's a book of limericks written about a zoo. Now she wrote this book with her brother. She's now retired from being a workshop leader and obviously she is becoming an author, uh, just as Ali is an author. And it's lovable limericks from A to Z, a limerick menagerie. Writing limericks is nothing but patterns. I have written the pattern and I have a slide later on to show you how that goes. Um, but I'm getting plenty of new sentences on. And oh, then uh, uh, Niha is saying, we are in love with this season. And and then I've read it, we are in love with this session. <laughs> <laughs> so there you are. Already we've managed to put some fun in. Yes, and everyone is smiling, even if I'm not seeing it, but I'm getting the vibes. <laughs> Excellent. One of the other things that I love to do with children and that they really like is I have a secret puzzle. I love these as well. These are wonderful. Uh, on Monday, I put up the puzzle of the week and I introduce it. As you know, I like to tell stories and children are great storytellers. So I always frame my puzzle of the week as a story. I introduce it on Monday and I put up a sign-up sheet. I don't want anyone to solve it then because a lot of these puzzles take five days to solve. 
However, I want them just to sign their name on the sheet. Nothing else, just their name, not the solution. Because on Friday, one of them is going to reveal the solution. Uh, some of them will go home. Some of them will search the internet. Some of them will ask people in other classes if they had that puzzle too. All sorts of things that they do with the puzzle of the week, but it's not revealed until Friday. I've also found that the, uh, one of the best ways, and I know you're reading this as we go along, uh, one, these, this is um, a slide taken from U-Cubed. U-Cubed, in case you're not familiar with it, um, is a site put together by Dr. Jo Bowler from Stanford. She is a math educator. And I think she could be counted as the person making the most change in math education and putting the fun and the play back into math. So she has volumes of these wonderful puzzles that come in there. You can also search the internet. Uh, this is just one and you're all good at math, I know, because that's why you're here, right? <laughs> um, here's your first puzzle, very, very quick. The number is greater than the number of pennies in a quarter. This is geared for younger children. So it would be greater than, someone type it in. Mm, not yet, but Esther, she was asking about samples of puzzle before the slide. And look, she uh, like un answered your question even without reading it. <laughs> I did. I know I don't like to read because everyone can read themselves. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I find it insulting. So, uh, so let's it's... Uh, give it a guess. So who would like to answer this? The number is greater than the number of pennies in a quarter. Do you want them to solve the puzzle with you, Anne? Yeah, 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 we'll do it. It's just so simple. Yeah. So simple. But it will take even, you know, kindergarten, first grade children. It'll take having some manipulatives for them, uh, the coins. So the number is less than the number of pennies in five dimes. So right now we know that it's between 25 and 50. It's an odd number. And if you count by fives, you say the number. Now that so, narrows, narrows it down. Yes, they found it. And the they first one who found it is Tahsina. And she said 35. And then I got all the other 35 coming after her. Yes, exactly. And I can base a whole week's number lessons on this because we can do all sorts of small puzzles each day that, that are similar to this, and they won't know they're solving the problem. So by Friday, everyone has the answer. And if they don't know it, they've probably asked someone already. So it's very simple to have a puzzle of the week. For older children, I didn't gear this to secondary students so much, but I have seen this done with middle school students and I love it. It's a camel trader story. Some of you are familiar with this story, I think, because it's almost a parable. Mm. So, uh, so I'm going to read the story for them and let's check if they are going to find the answer. My right. father died and left 17 camels for three sons. And according to the will, the eldest son should be given a half of all the camels. The middle son, the one third part, and the youngest son, the one ninth. Who can give us the answer? Uh, the second trader was a wise man and added his own camel. The oldest son took 18 divided by 2 equal 9. The second son took 18 divided by 3 equal 6 uh, camels. And the third son, 18 divided by 9 equal 2. Camels and the wise man took his own camel and went away. Yes, yeah, so when the second trader came, you can't do it with 17, as you probably discovered. Yeah. Uh, but when the other trader comes into the picture, the wise man, he adds his own camel. He says, here, add this one in. Then you have 18, and the problem comes solvable. 
Believe it or not, the kids will solve this problem. Probably. And then Laura gave us the answer as well. Nine plus six plus two equals 17. Exactly. So he was able to take back his camel and go off on his way. Simple puzzles, different, different ability levels, different uh, age groups. But there we go. Another, this is directly from the scope and sequence. This is taken from the IB, but it is quoting the National Council of Teachers of Math, uh, written in 2000. All students deserve an opportunity to understand the power and the beauty and the beauty of mathematics how many of us are missing this and um, are not including it in their curriculum and it's the easiest thing children go outside children observe symmetry every single day outside in nature the rings of a tree bark shells if you have the joy of being by the ocean. So use nature, bring in found objects from nature, bring in anything that is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, so that they will begin to understand that math is beauty. It is the language of beauty. So where do we go other than nature in daily living to find power and beauty? And we're going to focus on beauty. Write down a few things that you think of when it comes to beauty and math. Go for it. So other than nature, uh, I'm seeing supermarket buildings, music, a forest, uh, rock, uh, patterns, music and math, art, pathways, uh, again, art. And remember, please put all panelists and attendees in your chat. I see the human kindness, uh, the furniture, the theater, the kids, uh, the shopping, the yoga. Wow, wow, <laughs> I'm inspired. Architecture, oh. imagination, the community. Uh, our room, the clothes, the design, so all these are words, where can we find the beauty? Yes, there's a wonderful TED talk that you guys are reminding me of at the moment. It's done by uh, two professors of math, and I, I cannot remember their names. I, I, if I find them, I will um, send them to Ali or something so that you can have them. Uh, do you have a way of keeping in touch with people? Yes, yes. I you, you can find it. They started a company, a ballet company together to dance math. Now, children and dancing and movement. These are the things that children just love to do. I don't know if you thought about ballet, and this is probably, again, not going to play for some mysterious reason. But watch this short clip, uh, the Royal Ballet from London, dancing the dance of the signets. What math do you, of course it's not going to play. Uh, ah, so we found, uh, we found that TED talk, so someone shared it with us, Anne. Yes. Uh, in the chat, so we have the, uh, yes. Um, I'm not sure if your videos are embedded in the PowerPoint or uh, maybe and look, hey, can, you, can you enable the content up in the corner? Maybe that's why they are not uh, working. Do what? Enable content up you in are the right. corner. Yes. So you go down a little bit with your mouse and then there is this. Yes. Uh, yes just activate this one. You're absolutely right. Thank yes. you, Alan. I apologize to everyone, these things happen. <laughs> okay, so what math do you see in this? Uh, so I'm not sure, the video is not, is not working. 
How annoying. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, but then they started telling us we can see pattern, we can see sequence, uh, we can see <laughs> a pattern again coming again as a, as a message. Yes, absolutely. Um, mm. So you, you can see all these things. Uh, I, I like watching Swan Lake because there's a lot of mirroring that happens. Mm. The two sides of the line, usually there's eight dancers in a line and the two sides are mirroring. So while one has their right arm in the air, the other side will be using the left arm to make it symmetrical across the line. So amazing things, even the positions in ballet and many of your students study ballet, the, even the positions of the legs, they go into triangles, they go into all sorts there. Okay, so Lore, Lore is telling us the video will play if we are in a slideshow. Let's give it a try, Anne. Really? Hey. Thank you, Laura. All, between all of us, we'll make it through. Huh? <laughs> so if we go into slideshow, then we'll have to go right through. Um... Yeah, so we go to the slides. And then if not, and if you want really to show it, someone shared it with us via the chat, and then I can share my screen if you want, Anne. Oh, okay, that would be. <laughs> but let, let's have a look if it will, it will work now uh, with a slideshow and after enabling the content. Ugh. <laughs> Maybe the enter button will help you. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So okay. yeah, I see it now. <laughs> what math do you see? Do you see the diamond shape in there? Do you see the patterns of the legs? So our participants, they wrote intersection segment, shapes, pattern, symmetry, uh, time, angle, pattern, uh, uh, parallel lines, and many more periodic function. Ha, this is from oh, the secondary yes. teacher. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Now, I'm not suggesting you all become ballet teachers. <laughs> not at all but it asks the children to explain their thinking in math through movement through pe whenever you go to the gym i bet you the average american teenager can tell you the average of every player in baseball because they follow it they know averages they know percents they know how they're doing. So let's make these things more evident. And as we go to the gym, ask the PE teacher to be involved here. Ask him to teach some of the concepts that appear in all kinds of movement. So that will help towards building conceptual understandings. Label your classroom. Tell them to open the door to 45 degrees. Very simple paint it on the classroom floor so that they're learning geometry, they're learning the real words for the geometric shapes there and tell them, bring in a little tiny, one of those little jumping trampoline things, the individual ones, bring that into the classroom, have them jump 100, 180 degrees, have them jump 
45 degrees. Have them move all of these angles. If you want them to learn anything in math, they have to do it in moving. So let's bring more dance, more poetry, and more music into our math classes. And I think we're going to have fun, but the ultimate in fun. Uh, anyone who's seen me teach knows that I cannot teach without a tool set. And over the years, I've simplified it down for the youngest children and for you. If you are interested in woodwork and carpentry, not as additional fun activities to do if we're finished math, but ways to learn real math and learn concepts like forestry management. Why is it important that we don't cut down trees? Where do deciduous trees grow? These are all cross-cutting standards that appear in science, they appear in the environment, and they appear in math. So a tool set, simply, this one was assembled for under $40. Um, and again, ask at the local lumber yards if they will make a donation to the school. Raid their lumber bin because that is a wealth of different hardwoods and softwoods. Show children how to respect and use the wood that we cut down in our forests. Connect it with the sustainable development goals there. How do we manage our forests better so we don't have to cut down all the trees? Simple tool set. This is what I suggest as a beginning. Uh, the safety glasses will go on to uh, look at how we're going to apply the safety glasses because I have definite rules when I'm working with wood, tools, nails, and children. Always work with a buddy. That buddy is your safety buddy. And that buddy's first job is make sure you have your glasses on, your thumb tucked in when you're nailing or sawing. Uh, you don't want to start sawing with that little thumb there sticking out. You want them to tuck it in and fold their hand. And it's an easy gesture for them to learn. Tuck, fold then hold the wood with your hand. One partner's working, one is monitoring the safety. Returning your tools to a marked location so that you can see who has not, how many people have not returned their glasses there. Just quickly count them. At the end of the day, I can glance to my carpentry area and I can say, huh, Five people have not yet returned your glasses. I need to go on a safety hunt to find our missing glasses. There you go. So they're on pegboard and with little cup hooks, uh, not cup hooks, little pegboard hooks holding them on. These tools, these are, uh, these photographs are taken with permission from a school in San Francisco named Brightworks. And you might want to watch Geva Tully's TED Talk. Uh, Geva Tully, G-E-V-E-R, Tully. Uh, he lays out a lot of wonderful small projects you can do with children. He also has a book called 50 Dangerous Things You Can Do With Children. <laughs> I love your, your, your ideas, and It always brings the risk in the learning. Absolutely. There needs to be some risk. As safe as possible is now the new motto. Not completely safe, not, not don't let's not do carpentry because it's too dangerous. I've never had an accident in my class. So storage of wood. There you go. This is from a school in Portland, Oregon. Uh, and notice how, this is wonderful, how they built in a little sign there that says, how will we build ideas together? So I do suggest that you have some provoking questions up in your classroom that merely 
challenge them to use the materials you have at hand. Um, as you know, uh, all I put in safety things. If you get any wood at all, you need to make sure they know how to sand it. Because the first thing they will have to do is get splinters out of their hands if they don't. So make sure that you very carefully sand everything. I think, Mihai, if you're there, you'll recognize this because I believe you were in this class in Qatar. Yes. So this is like a long time ago and you're bringing some memories. 10 years ago, indeed it is, yes. Uh, you'll see the lady in the middle there holding up um, uh, a piece of pegboard. These are items that they made in a math and creativity class that I taught with simple objects. There was nothing in there other than nails, hammers. They mostly found paint or used magic markers. Uh, and rubber bands. Rubber bands are phenomenal in there. Measuring projects. All of these things have to be measured very carefully and often to the nearest half inch or less, five centimeters even. And they make great Christmas presents. She's holding up a key, ball, a key ring holder. So as you come into the house, you can hang up your uh, keys. Um, and I think it's Mihai, isn't it, holding? I know, it's not Mihai. This uh, used to be the art teacher. Uh, Mihai is the PE teacher. <laughs> the PE teacher. I'm sorry, I went too fast there. Yes. Uh, holding up another key ring that he's actually measured very carefully to me. And it's hard. I wanted you to, if you have a paper, piece of paper handy, find the midpoint with nothing other than a ruler and a pencil. And tell me how you would do it. You can stick it in the chat window there if you wish to. And we have around 15 minutes left. Aye, aye. Just to keep an eye on time. I know you have plenty of things to be shared, so. <laughs> I'm terrible uh, at keeping time. <laughs> okay, so someone is saying we can fold the paper, yes. uh, and by folding the paper, we can uh, we can find the middle point that you are looking for. Excellent. Now you can't do that with wood, can you? You can't fold it. <laughs> and so Hiba, <laughs> she said, uh, uh, draw the perpendicular by sector of two chords. The meeting point is its center. Very good, yes, and you explained it perfectly. Thank you. Well, this done. is Ayla or Ayla. Uh, I'm not sure with the names, and uh, it's not easy when also we don't know them or see them. Yes, <laughs> yeah. indeed. I hope this is giving you a lot of ideas. Um, games, tic tac toe, very easy to make with a drill. Just drill some holes, countersink them so that they hold marbles, and play tic tac toe. Geo boards, simple to make them with a hammer and nails. I don't know, you can't see it very clearly, but there's one there. All sorts of logic games and puzzles. You can see one right in this picture here. Uh, so all sorts of ideas for things that you can do. This is one of the funnest things to combine art and math in there. Uh, it's a very simple number line and you construct the problems for them just with simple addition. One plus nine and you draw a line from the one on one axis to the 10 on the other axis. It's called string art. I didn't put many examples other than this very beautiful one there uh, because you can find a lot of good samples on the internet if you type in the words string art. Uh, circles, these are also great for times tables. If you look up Waldorf math, you will find a lot of ideas in there for using um, string uh, or string and people. String and people are wonderful for explanations of math too. Now, 
Final question for you as we come to the last section here. How do you make math visible in your classroom? So let's see how do you make math visible in your classroom in the chat. Feel free to put some of your ideas on Facebook or here on Zoom. And if you have any question, don't hesitate to send your question to the Q&A section, and then we will have a look at these uh, later on. So Rashida, she said, we make uh, math visible by making real life connection and uh, make using posters, flashcards, uh, uh, games, activities, um, uh, uh, making uh, uh, like uh, the scavenger hunts, and playing so all these are some of the ideas that we are getting uh, in the chat we integrate uh -huh. mass into daily activities we do cooking lovely oh cooking is a wonderful source of math yes um so lots of good ideas there i didn't hear the one that i was really really hoping to hear and that was questions Questions are the most important part. This is, uh, someone posted in the, um, the signs with the red posting on the, it's the left-hand side of the screen. Mm. Uh, have a look at that one. This is a child answering the question, what is math? They were asked to form definitions of the word math. Well, some very interesting sentences came up, they were then asked to prove why they chose that sentence. And we can't see the small print of his working out there, but he used two whole sheets of paper to explain why math is a language that describes reality. This was actually from an eighth grade student so this it would be a really good activity to, to use with the kids to ask them a question, a very simple question, what is math? And then have them defend their answer visibly on the classroom walls. Again, looking at a PYP school, Wade King Elementary in Bellingham, uh, their coordinator gave me permission to share these slides with you. These were the questions that children came up with for a unit on measurement. And the teacher to start the unit off had brought in a bunch of different measuring equipment, measuring tools, and did a carousel activity where they rotated to different tables, looked at the different uh, measuring tools there, tried to guess what they measured and whether it was large quantities or small quantities. And then they, at the end of that session, wrote down all the questions they had about math. Some of the best ones were, how do we measure the world? Great question. Do twins, this is my favorite ever, do twins measure exactly the same? I love that question. But all of these questions, unless they see them, they forget about them. They don't answer them. We all know that all teaching is about asking questions now. It is not about giving answers anymore. So noting down the questions that the children have, asking them to prove their answers when they found the answer, asking them to put their proofs up on the wall, and it really is better than your display. So I would suggest starting with empty walls other than challenge questions like, what is math? Write a one sentence definition. Probably we've never thought about doing that. And then again, materials with challenges. Again, the challenge here, what tools can you use to support your thinking in math? Simple challenges, this is from the Opal School in Portland. I want to give them credit. They're a very Reggio-based school. Um, they do have classes. They have workshops for teachers at the moment. Of course, they're online. But, Amazing. Uh, I had the 
us to visit Anne, and it was very inspiring. So Opel School, and we had Matt uh, sharing with us one session in our early years day, and uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yes, indeed. So this is where those pictures come from. This is your final challenge, writing a limerick. <laughs> a limerick is nothing, as all poetry is. Um, Putting it to music would be incredible too, of course, but that's entirely up to you. We're not going to do it together. I'm just going to read you a sample. And uh, here we are. I've opened it at a page at random. This is again from that book's Welcome to, Welcome to Shady Lane Zoo. F is a fantastic fox who purchased a pair of blue socks. He wore them one day, then lost his way and was found in a vault at St. Fort Knox. So you can see the rhyme scheme, the A, A, B, B, A. And again, always the seven to 10 syllable line. So this is just a challenge for you. And for anyone who wants to combine, we had some poets in the group at the beginning. That's why I'm ending again with poetry. I would uh, love to see your submissions. If there's a way, you can email them to me at pypteacher at math, at, sorry, pypteacher at macmac.com. So, Anne, this was very inspiring. I'm going to give the few minutes left for uh, the people to ask some question. And then if you don't mind stopping sharing your screen, I would oh, like yeah. to share here our uh, website and then uh, show our participants that next Saturday we have another full day full of inspiration, uh, positive discipline in the classroom and in Arabic, in English, in French. Uh, you can join and learn from many speakers uh, based all around the planet. Uh, we have some paid workshop also for the people who would like to attend some paid workshop. And then for this special event, you can go on the paid online training and then you can request a certificate of attendance, a paid certificate of attendance, and it's only five euros. And in this way, you can support all this work and you can uh, uh, push us to continue planning for other days, other topics with other speakers. So this is where you can find all the information about what we are doing and uh, our, our learning together and our sharing together. So I have some question now. And the grade nine students believes that math is boring. How can we help them on? Where do we start? <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, it, what it tells me is that there's too much drill and kill. In, it, in your class. And I think the way to stop is to move the desks out of the way one day, just move them and do math with movement. Spend 40 minutes on doing math with movement. Ask them what math they're seeing there. Have them make a circle and dance. Do some country dances from wherever you're from. Every country in the world has folk dances of its own. Wonderful way of doing math. Bring in a ball of string, ask them to explain their string, their thinking with string. <laughs> Good, so those are two ideas where you are bringing some movement and some hands-on activity to the grade nine. And I'm sure from this, you can find a strong conceptual uh, connection, have mystery games related to their lesson. This is an advice from Vivian. And again, we can we can bring this atelier and those tools and ask from them uh, to prepare gifts for Christmas. It's happening very, very soon. And then they need to take some measurements. And then from here, you bring a kind of a, a real life connection. Uh, smaller grades children love math, but as they go higher, it's 
become a problem for them. And here again, it's maybe because we are stick to our textbooks and we are only doing drilling and we are forgetting to make the question or ask the question, where can we find math? And we answered this question in a previous webinar today. So any other question that you would like to share? Uh, we started seeing all the thank you and uh, Jamie is saying thank you for bringing creativity back to math. Uh, it was really an interesting day. Uh, so I'm very happy that our participants enjoyed the day and it's always great collaborating with you and learning from you. Uh, keep inspiring all the educators and uh, have an excellent day. It's the end of the day for me here in Dubai and it's 8 a.m. in the morning for you. Uh, so thank you again for your time and we stay in touch. Yes, indeed. And thank you all for coming.